next up, next up, we're talking about pay per call. So with pay per call, what makes a call billable? So at the end of the day, folks, I want you to know that this is my opinion on how I would approach the market. This is not like uh, a set in stone thing. Okay, L let me explain. So traditionally, traditionally, if I can spell, actually, let's do this instead. Paper call networks. The way that they bill versus going to uh, direct to local business. Let's talk about this so that you guys understand the difference. Paper call networks are going to, um, they're going to pay you out based upon duration. So they're gonna say like duration is greater than 90 seconds. And probably what they aren't going to tell you, let's do this, duration is greater than 90 seconds. And what they probably aren't going to tell you is that they're treating what they call, this is their language, I, I don't like their language, they're treating the calls. And, and what they mean by that is that they're pushing the caller through at minimum one IVR. And so an IVR is like, hey, press one for residential, press two for commercial, okay? Press three for this type of roof, press four for that type of roof, for any other type of roof, please press five. Do you guys like when you are on a phone call and they're treating the calls? Give me some feedback in the chat. How many of you guys get really freaking annoyed and how many of you guys just hang up the freaking phone? Right, you're like, oh my gosh, they've asked me five questions. Can I just talk to somebody? Understand, yeah. Understand that you guys aren't alone, right? Like that's normal behavior. In fact, um, with every treatment of a call, with every IVR key press, okay, you're going to lose statistically about 20% of your callers. This is a big deal. This is a really, really big deal, okay? And statistically, you're gonna lose this, okay, on each and every one of the treatments that you offer. So if you're doing paper call, I just gotta be honest, like you don't want these treatments. You want it to ring direct to somebody that can answer the phone. Okay, this also goes for like, you know, um, you know, you call and um, somebody picks up the phone and it's like, you know, to help serve you so you better help, you know, direct you to the, the best representative, please enter your zip code. Same thing, right? It's an IVR, it's a key press, it's that prompt, right? And so paper call networks, like this is gonna be, these are gonna be their main two criteria. And then their third criteria is that it's from a billable or in network, zip code and that simply means that like wherever it is that your caller is calling from and wants help from or their house is from is for a zip code that they've sold and that they can service <laughs> yeah douglas says between ivr having a long message about hours of operation and location and everything else before i talk to a person i really hate it yeah so just understand that's how it works with people, you know, the, the leads that you're generating as well. So this is what makes a pay-per-call network offer billable, so to speak, right? Let's not say billable, let's just say in-network zip code. Okay, so then when we're working with a local business, okay, and we're selling direct, instead of going to one of these pay-per-call networks, and let's say that the price on a qualified call here is 12 bucks over here i can get no joke like 90 bucks right like that's the reason why we go direct and why we go sell a local business is because we will literally make six seven eight ten even 15 times the income if we sell the deal correctly okay now i've done a ton of videos about how to sell paper called deals correctly and most people that I see and that I talk to and that I start coaching are still selling deals ass backwards. Okay, so go look on the channel, go look on the blog on how to sell paper call deals correctly, okay? 
And we do that by doing a pay-per-click ad spend test or a 30-day test. Look up those keywords and you'll find that training, okay? This will ensure that like you have the least skin possible off of your back, so to speak, and you have the best price per call possible. And you know, without a shadow of a doubt, and you've proven it, that you can fulfill for the customer the profit, okay? So that's why we go direct to business, right, versus pay per call. But when we look at these two criteria, when I go to a local dentist, right, and I tell the local dentist that I have, you know, calls coming in or I want to sell him pay per call, and I go directly after this number, and I tell him that the call is billable based upon a duration, immediately we're having an adversarial conversation. Immediately, like we're butting heads. We're smacking head on into each other. And the only thing that he can think of is, well, that's not fair. If I don't have a chance to convert the customer, why should I pay for it? And folks, I've dealt with this so many times, right? Even with big professional companies, right? They don't know what percentage of calls that they're answering and that all that they can think about is that you're screwing them with this duration. Does that make sense to everybody joining us live on the call right now? So I'm gonna tell you guys how to get around this and I'm gonna teach you guys how I get even more favorable terms and what I mean by that is I end up getting more calls that are qualified when I go to direct local businesses because I'm able to pitch terms that actually end up penciling out to me and making me more qualified calls. And then obviously I'm also charging five, six, 10, even 15 times the amount per call. Does that sound like it's worth your time watching the rest of this video right now? I'm asking you, you guys are live. I need some feedback. I mean, for those of you guys watching the, 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 the video on YouTube or on the blog, you can still type in a comment. That'd be great so I can see it. Pat on the back. Hell yeah. All right. So this is what we do. We cut. We, we change up the order of these. So the first thing that we say is that they are in market. And we define in market as like they're looking for your type of business, okay? So they, if, if you're a dentist, they're looking for a dentist, okay? This does not mean that they are in market looking for one of the only three services that you offer, right? If they're highly specialized, we're gonna tell them from the get-go, we can't filter down our calls like that, right? We don't serve a percentage of a percentage of a percentage of the market, right? So if you want to play with us, you can't just cherry pick calls. You got to take all the calls, right? So that's a big lesson in and of itself. But in market for us simply means that they're looking for your type of business, okay? Then next is that they're in territory, Okay, not, again, to be to be clear here, it's not that they're in your service area. I, you know, if I sell paper call in West Palm Beach here, right, right down the street from me, throwing distance, if I sell paper call in West Palm Beach, I'm not gonna rely on one vendor or one local business to be able to handle my call volume. I wanna sell to multiple people so that I diversify, right? I spread out my risk, okay? So I can't deal with, you know, Bob's Dental, right, uh, servicing five miles from this address. And then I can't deal with ABC Smiles dealing with a radius of 20 miles around their address. Like those practicalities, they don't work. Does that make sense? Joe says yes. Like it just doesn't happen. Like I'd have to filter out the calls at the beginning and I'd lose 20% of my revenue immediately. Like, no, I'm not doing that. Okay, so in territory for us means county. Okay, county based. Okay, they're county based. So in West Palm Beach, 
it's that the, the, the person is in Palm Beach County. Okay. For some businesses, just to be frank, guys, this is a little bit of a stretch. Palm Beach County is big, right? It's long. There's lots of little cities and areas and towns in Palm Beach County. For a dentist that people have to drive to, I got to be frank. Like, I got to be honest. Like, this can be a bit of a more of a tough sell. But that doesn't mean that we adjust our offer for them. Okay. So, um, Douglas Blatt says, how do you know what county? By listening to the phone call. Right? By listening to the phone call. They're going to give them their address as part of their onboarding, right? For 99% of the time, right? If you're going to get an objection, oh, that's too far away, right? Or you're going to get the address and it's not going to be the right county, right? We're going to learn that if the company can't service that person on the phone call, okay? So in market, in territory, okay? Then, and notice I put this last, the call has to be over 30 seconds in duration. Notice I don't bring this up at the beginning. Instead, I say they're in market, they're looking for your type of business, right? They're in territory, and then I use this as like a plus. Plus, the call has to be over 30 seconds in duration because you couldn't book an appointment in 30 seconds, right? No, so I turn this, I spin this into a positive, okay? So there's a there's an if here, okay, um, or there's an exception here. Unless the call goes to voicemail, okay. So, <laughs> folks, at the end of the day, when running paper call, you know off the top of the bat that depending on the industry, um, the, these numbers are gonna change, but let's say like the home services, home service industry, you know that there's gonna be a 20 to 30% missed call ratio, right? Where the call goes to voicemail. It's not because the customer hung up and you can look if you got a good call tracking platform on who hung up the call, right? It went to voicemail and then they hung up, right? Um, or it rang and rang and rang for 10 minutes, right? And nobody answered. If that happens, understand that like that's not your problem. Like you can only control what you can obviously control. Like we can't control that. Okay? So if a call goes to voicemail, we still charge for that. Okay? Whether the caller leaves a voicemail or not. That's how we run it. And folks, the reason the reason that we have this criteria in is because this has bitten us in the ass, bitten me in the ass one too many times. I've had people quite literally in one day miss 10 or 15 phone calls, right? And then you look at, or you think about how much you're charging them, whether it's 90 bucks, hundred bucks, or whether it's like big ticket lead gen and it's 400 bucks a call, that's a lot of money to anybody, right? That's not my risk, right? And um, the, the business owner, no matter what, if they made a commitment to pay somebody for advertising, this is gonna happen no matter what, right? They're gonna pay for a call if it goes to voicemail, no matter what advertising they're doing, correct? Correct, okay? So when we look at what makes a call billable, um, this is how we do billing when we sell direct to local businesses. And when we run paper call, folks, um, I don't want this. I don't wanna sell to paper call networks. The only time I ever sell to paper call networks is when I don't have an existing direct to local business customer. I use these only when absolutely necessary because I make a whole lot more money and that should be obvious in this scenario when I sell direct to local businesses. So how do we, how, how do we check each call for the billing criteria, right? So we have somebody actually go through and manually listen to these calls, okay? And uh, in, in like home services, for example, you know, phone call duration is like probably an average of three minutes, okay? So let's say that we send over 10 calls that are three minutes. Like that's an easy job for the week or for the month, 
or a VA or somebody on our team to audit. Okay, it's not really that big of a deal. But if you take it one step further and you actually start doing this, you start to come up with filters that you can use, right? Like you come up with the call was missed and your call tracking platform uses that, you just bill them for a missed call, right? Like um, the, the call is, um, you know, over the billing criteria, right? It's over 30 seconds. Those are the ones that we need to listen to then that aren't missed. Okay, great. Then like folks, we don't have to listen to all three minutes. Like we can seek through the call, right? We can say, okay, let's listen 30 seconds in, then what happened? All right, great. Now let's fast forward or let's move to 60 seconds in, 90 seconds in. Okay, great. Yep. They're in territory. They booked a phone call. They definitely want their service done, right? That's billable. Okay, so it doesn't really mean that somebody's listening to the entire phone call is the takeaway that I want you to have. Okay, and again, right, by, by selling with this criteria versus paper call networks, I'm actually able to get a lot higher conversion rate from raw call actually into a qualified call for direct to local businesses versus paper call networks. And then obviously, like that's one multiple and one lever, right? The second lever is actually, right, the difference of what we're able to charge when we go direct versus what the paper call networks charge. Hope that makes sense.